I'm building a Fairlight CMI. The Fairlight CMI. The mere mention of his name is guaranteed to perk up the ears of any child of the 80s musician. Sure, nowadays you can quickly go through a thousand presets that you don't really care about. But the journey of finding your own sounds with your own sonic compass is far more interesting. That's the reason I believe that almost every 70s and 80s synth is now being remade and more to follow. Like quite a few people, I am fascinated by the Fairlight CMI and how it continues to influence people today. Quite a few events occurred recently that led me down a path, so let's take a wee look. All right, so here goes. I'm a lucky guy. I have a CMI Series 3 in Kenya, and it's a bot brought me a lot of joy. Now, I also have two MFX units, one that was a workhorse um, many years ago, and another one that I bought on Craigslist, primarily to use as the surfboard key, to get the surfboard keyboard and use that with my CMI in Kenya. My little pre-keyboard is getting a bit old and getting a bit inconsistent. Now, I've been in Kenya for a long time and my MFX has stayed here in LA. So many years passed, but one time when I was visiting in LA, I decided to boot up this mystery machine that I'd never actually used before to boot it up and see what was on it. Now, I did a video about what was on it and I thought that, that was a fun little thing. But one of the things I really noticed back then was the boot screen. It said CMI on it, not MFX. Well, it said CMI MFX. I thought, what's this? What? Now, I've seen CMI machines that had MFX capabilities. There are proper CMI MFXs that you could switch between. This is just an MFX. I've not seen an MFX machine that said CMI on it. So that was weird. So that, you know, on the outside, it just looks like a regular MFX machine. Same as my MFX, well, very similar to my MFX 3 Plus. So, of course, I, I opened up and had a little look and I see these cards. Huh. Then I look inside my MFX 3 Plus and I see these cards. Very, very different. But the first set of cards are very familiar. They've got CMI marked on them for kickoff. And then secondly, if I compare it to a CMI Series 3 internals, huh. That's weird. Okay. So it turned out that um, the quick story is that back in the day when Fairlight ventured into the you know the first world, as it were, of digital multi-track recording, they wanted to be able to use the CMI um, to be able to be upgraded to be an MFX, right? And that's fine. But then, in between the time that they were then going to go to the MFX 3 Plus, they still had these boards and this architecture, and so they basically had CMI cards inside these MFX-looking boxes. Obviously, for uh, technical and efficiency reasons in the, in, in the end, uh, there was a need to change the architecture to meet the, 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 the needs of the marketplace and, and have a more modern ap approach. But this was an MFX machine that was CMI on the inside. Um, as it turns out, it's, been, it's slightly different from pure CMI machine, but um, we'll get to that later. Now, the product of that new technical development was the Fairlight MFX 3 Plus, which was huge for Fairlight, and that's a totally different story. However, None of this was of any consequence until I returned to California. Um, and when I returned to California, there was a member of um, the Fairlight Facebook users group, um, the CMI users group, that contacted me and said, there's a new CMI owner that needs some help. And I said, I'm more than willing to help, of course. Um, oh yes, and I'm, I know lots of CMI things, great. But then it occurred to me, I don't have my CMI here. And so I had a Zoom, we had a Zoom call and it was great and all, but then I realized I don't have any buttons to press. I don't have any things to, 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 you know, how can I help this person? I keep on kind of forgetting the shortcuts and everything. So it's clear I needed a CMI, but from, from, from where? It's not like, it's not 1985. You can't find them in every gift store, you know, in every you can't find them in Sears. So anyhow, uh, but then I remembered that downstairs is my old MFX CMI machine that I'd kind of forgotten about. And then a little spark happened. Um, it said CMI in it. It bloody did. So could that machine load the CMI software at least? It has the cards. Why would there be any problem whatsoever with old 80s technology? Everything should work fine. Anyway, so I switched on this machine. And first off, it didn't actually want to start. At first, it got to the boot screen and stopped. 
and it told uh, Andre told me, oh, it needs a battery. And then I got a new battery, and then the SCSI setup needed to be fixed. There was a bunch of startup things that didn't want to didn't want to go. And then even when it got to the screen, which was an MFX kind of looking screen, it was just the top banner, and it didn't say anything. And so then I had to I realized I had to downgrade my my MFX three plus console to the old software, which it did, which is just amazing that it could even do that. And then finally it booted up into being an uh, MFX, a normal MFX. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so great, it boots up into an early version of MFX and it plays and everything. It's a little bit slower than MFX 3 plus, but it, at that point it's just an MFX. I'm like, ah, oh, can't find the CMI part anywhere, right? Uh, Chris um, sent me a disk image, or a CMI disk image at the time, but that, that was like another variable. That was, I needed to uh, get it onto a SCSI to SD and then make sure it's partitioned properly, and that, that's, its own, that's another variable. So my mind went at one point, if this is CMI based, perhaps the software is already installed. Now, as per usual, this is about one o'clock in the morning and I was about to go to bed, and, and I was thinking, maybe, it would just accept the commands, like you do by hand sometimes, instead of using the, the icons with a pen. So I tried to get to sleep, and then my body was like, you gotta try this now. So of course I got up in, you know, in the middle of the night, went downstairs with just my you know, socks and underpants on, and here's me switching on the, the CMI MFX machine, and I kinda got giddy, like switching it on. I thought, what, what's this gonna be? And it finally came up, and I typed in SC. I didn't realize the little Pandora's box that I was about to open. And boom, it goes to the Fairlight Series 3 system configuration page. I was like totally blown away. Then I type in FX and it takes me to the, to the FX page. Fantastic, we're on a roll. I was just totally, who can I tell this to? You know, I'm one o'clock in the morning, I'm in my garage shrieking. Neighbors must have think I was killing a hamster or something. Anyway, I typed in RS. Let's go to RS, our good old friend. And it comes up for a second. And it says process supported because things. But let's go to, is there a, a sampling? It comes up, oh, not allowed, ah. And it's like, I know what you're trying to make me do. I'm not gonna do it. But then let's just go to wave edit. And it comes up. Now, of course, it doesn't have the channel cards. It was expecting to see them. Uh, this, this thing doesn't have channel cards, it has DCC cards. I didn't need sound, I didn't need it to really work. I just needed the menus to remember how to go through things. I just needed to work enough to run RS to help out this fellow CMI musician. So what would it need? I don't know. So at this point, I reached out to the lovely Steve Rance. Now, Steve Rance is one of the engineers and programmers at Fairlight. He was responsible for things like RS on the Series 3 and he worked on the MFX along with Chris Alfred and a bunch of other lovely people. And he said to me, um, well, it might work, kinda, depending on the backplanes. You probably need some CMI31 cards to make it even see the cards, but it won't make any sound. And I said, that, that's all right. I just need to find those cards then. Where would I find those cards? There's nothing on eBay. And he goes, oh, well, you haven't tried my shed yet, have you? So um, it was at this point that Steve, uh, I realized that Steve and I, was only, he was only 40 minutes away from me. So he invites me to come up and throw some cards in, in this machine and, you know, see what's what. <laughs> what a palaver. This is where this goes. It only lives on the floor. It's designed that way. Great. So I go up there and we start plugging in cards from his CMI and initially it didn't start seeing anything. But I should be able to move that over to there to prove the point. And he's like, ah, wait a minute, I think I know what this is. Um, it's probably missing a whole bunch of tracks on the circuit boards. Now we didn't have time to really take everything apart. And he goes, you might be able to get this going, but it's gonna need work. So you're gonna need this card, this card, this card, it's only got four cards, it needs a bunch of other stuff and jumpers and a bunch of probably wiring. And I said, well, you know, it's, I, that's fine. Okay, so as long as I can get it to provoke it to, to run. And he said, all right, well, why don't you take these boards and, um, and see if you can get it to work. If, if some of them work, great. If you, if you, if you get it working, buy these boards in, from me uh, and, and, and we'll call it a day. Fantastic, right? And so that's, that's a great deal. And um, we get, start getting ready to put the MFX and everything into my car. And then I kind of go, 
Well, and now, by the way, Steve has a CMI Series 3 in his house, just sitting there in his living room. And it's actually quite funny because at the, at the point there, when you see a CMI in a living room, which is not normally there, you realize how big, it's like a traffic light. You know, when you see traffic lights, they're huge. And then when you see them, you don't realize how big they are until you're standing beside them. Anyway, the CMI was kind of like that. And so I said, um, I said, you know, it'd be really handy to have a datum to kind of, you know, check my work against the CMI MFX machine and ch checking the, I mean, I don't know if these boards are even working. I wouldn't have anything to know. So I'd have too many variables, you know? So if I had like, hmm, I don't know, a CMI would be really, and it is taking up a lot of space. And he goes, all right, I get where you're coming from. And yep, it does make sense. And so, Stephen very generously said, well, let's kill two birds with one stone. I'll give you these cards, and at the same time, I'll give you, loan you, <laughs> loan you my CMI, um, because quite frankly, it's taking up a lot of space in my house here. Uh, and he goes, I'm gonna need this back at some point. I'm gonna move into a bigger place soon, and so I'll be needing it back then. And then we'll take it from there. At the same time, I can use that CMI to um, make a series of videos that I want to do, and then also to help my friend, the, the Fairlight owner. So boom, win-win. So I was kind of like, okay. I didn't want to do too much movements in case he changed his mind. So we just packed up everything up and moved everything into my Prius and, and, uh, and it was fantastic. So um, I drove very carefully home with a laden down, with a keyboard, with a CMI, with my MFX CMI, and all these cards. I drove very carefully home, very excitedly, giddily. And um, anyhow, that was, that was fun. So before I could start working on the CMI Frankenstein MFX machine, one of the things Steve did say is, you, you, you would like me to kind of clean the cards up. They've been sitting in storage for quite a long time. You know, index them, and you know, I write down the serial numbers, I took pictures, put them into the database, and there's quite a lot of cards. So that was already a task, and I started doing that. I, I did some cosmetic cleaning, writing down any bits where parts were missing, labeled them, the whole thing, right? Again, according to Steve, it would seem that if I can get the CMI to see one card, the MFX to see one card, RS should work. However, he said, it's been a long time, I can't remember. You should really check with all the other guys in the community. And then my little germ of an idea started having naughty thoughts. And then, lo and behold, my brain goes down a different route. And then I go, hmm, Steve, what would it take to actually convert this machine? seeing that I'm seeing it can run these pages and stuff. And he went, oh, that's probably a lot of work. But you might be lucky, you might get an early enough board that it's carrying the extra wiring, but I don't know. Uh, try it out. And he says, talk to Peter, and talk to Chris Alfred, and talk to Andre. So, which I did. And Andre was like, huh, that's a lot of work. I'm like, really? He's oh yeah, it's a ton of rewiring, it's a bunch of stuff. I was like, huh. And he said, unless, you know, you'd have to look at the board, it might be an older board. And so he took some pictures and he goes, it's a newer board, dude. It's going to be a lot of work. And I was like, ah, oh, okay, but I'm up for the challenge. So then spoke to Peter and Peter was like, oh my goodness, I did this. It's a lot of work. You don't want to do it. I'm like, oh, two experts that really know what they're doing. I'm going to ignore them and continue. Then I talked to Chris Alfred and he's like, oh, dude, you don't want to do that. So I've got Andre, Steve, Chris Alfred, and um, Peter. Was there one more? <laughs> Andre told me, Peter told me, Steve told me, Chris Alfred told me. Let's just say there's a fifth, there's five people now. Maybe me, maybe that I was the fifth telling myself not to do it. So I continue cleaning the cards, knowing that there's, there's gonna be a solution that will present itself. I, you know, I, I, I feel like that. Now, Peter comes up with an interesting solution. He says, I've got some blank backplane cards. They just need to be populated. Those connectors came from the States, so, you can get a hold of those cards. He said, but I've only got these cards. I need to duplicate these cards. And we talked about maybe we can get those cards duplicated by scanning them and then getting um, some, you know, there's different companies that do small run PCB uh, manufacturing. But the more I realized that this might be an exciting project, it's gonna become a project within a project, just getting the backplanes to work. And then not knowing if there's just too many variables. Um, but then it got me thinking, well, and this is what I spoke to Peter about. I said, well, but surely there was versions out there because they used to be the rack mounted versions of the Fairlight that were also MFXs. He goes, yeah, those rack mounted ones, those, those had 
the right backplane boards. You, you need one of those. And, you know, but I still think the idea of building a CMI, like, out of Fairlight parts, you know, um, that for me is amazing. You're building something out of something that didn't exist before. Now, I know that that's fine for, for Peter. He probably, does, he probably calls that Tuesday. But for me, it's a big deal. So I talked to Peter and, and Steve, and they both said, well, what you need is like an empty cage to transplant the cards into. Yeah, those rack-mounted ones, those, those had the right backplane boards. You, you need one of those. And then I put it out to the universe, and I said, well, I kind of probably need one of those. And boom, literally within, I think, two or three days, I'm just about to go to bed, and my little brain goes, go, go to eBay. Go to eBay now. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to go to eBay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I don't need anything from, go to eBay, fool. I'm like, you're going to call me a fool. And then we had an argument for a while, but then in the end, I went to eBay. And what do I see? An empty chassis. I couldn't believe my eyes. I'm looking at this thing going, what? An empty CMI cage? And then I took pictures of, I took the pictures from the eBay listing. I sent it to Chris Alfred and Steve. And they both said, yep, that looks like the back plane is the right back plane. It's from a CMI that was configured as an MFX. So it's missing some parts, but those are just parts. The tracks are there. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So I pondered for what? Oh, it was ages, probably 20 seconds. And then I bought it and it's on its way across from the United Kingdom. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm formally announcing this project, which I initially called this project Doomed to Fail. But I thought, no, I've renamed it and I'm calling it, I'm building a Fairlight CMI. So here we go. It's gonna be fraught with challenges and it might not work. And that's okay, it's part of the journey. I'm willing to do it.